Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your favorite quarterback and hater, Robert Mathis, and you're listening to the For the Culture Podcast. This is the For the Culture Podcast. I'm your host, Luke Diamond, with my man, Jason Spears. Before we get into the preview, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, Radio.com, iHeartRadio, Google Play, all your favorite podcasting platforms. Hit the like button, leave a comment, and turn on the notification bell so you get a notification every time we drop a podcast. As we now head to week four on the road, taking on the undefeated 3-0 Chicago Bears and the first real test for the Colts this season because the Jaguars 0-2 since beating us, the Jets 0-4 on the season, the Vikings 0-3 on the season. Yes, I do believe the Vikings are better than their record. The Jets just as bad as their record says they are. Maybe even worse than that if that's possible, sitting at 0-4 coming off a bad Thursday night loss to a third-string rookie quarterback at home when the Denver Broncos needed to travel 2,000 miles across the country to play in that game at MetLife Stadium last night. So I'm happy, I'm content with the wins against the Vikings and Jets. First off, you play who's in front of you, you play who's on your schedule, and we had convincing wins at home against both the Vikings and the Jets. So it's not like we barely scraped by an 0-3 or an 0-4 team. We won both games convincingly after that Week 1 disaster in Jacksonville, but this is a validation game. This is a game against a 3-0 team. Are they the best 3-0 team in the league? No, of course not, but they have a loaded defense, playmakers all over the field. Khalil Mack will go through the entire defensive breakdown of the Chicago Bears, and then offensively now they have an upgrade, in my opinion, at the quarterback position, benching Mitch Trubisky last week in the second half against Atlanta for Nick Foles. So this will be a good test for the Colts in week four as we travel to Chicago, our second road game of the year. We have to bounce back now because we did not look good on the road in week one to take on an undefeated 3-0 Chicago Bears team. Definitely a good test for this team. The Bears present a lot of challenges, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Lots of really, really good defensive players. So this is definitely going to be the best defense we've seen and certainly the best team we've seen. So the Colts have to come ready to play, have a, have a good game plan, be prepared, and uh, come out and play well because this isn't a team they can really fall behind uh, against because of their Strength. I mean, the Bears' strength is their defense. The Colts it would have a difficult time coming back, so they've got to jump out early, play well, you know, maybe force some turnovers. I, I, they just they, they need to get positive momentum going on the road and keep it this time as opposed to, you know, Jacksonville when it got away from us and keep our foot on the gas, man. We This, this is going to be a good test, though, and it should be an interesting game. Yes, it should. And let's start off with the Chicago Bears offense coming in to this week four matchup. They are the 20th offense in the league in terms of points per game. But now with the upgrade at the quarterback position, that number would probably look different if you were to go back the last couple of weeks. And Foles obviously played very well in the second half against Atlanta. They brought him into the game when they were down 26 to 10 last week. Most teams, you'd say, wow, that was an incredible comeback. When you do it against Atlanta, though, you think back 28-3 in the Super Bowl, and then two weeks ago, a game, it looked like it was impossible, like mathematically impossible for them to lose to the Cowboys, and then they do it in back-to-back weeks, and they do it again. They blow back-to-back 16-point leads in the fourth quarter. It was the first time in the modern era where a team blew two 16-point leads in the second half in a season. They did it in back-to-back games, the Atlanta Falcons. They did it to the Cowboys in Week 2 and the Bears in Week 3 after Matt Nagy benched Mitch Trubisky last week. And I know Bear fans are sick and tired of hearing about it, trading up to draft them in 2017. They pass on Mahomes. They pass on Watson. They could have traded back and gotten Mahomes or Watson. They trade up to draft Mitch Trubisky out of North Carolina, benched last week for Nick Foles as Foles leads the Chicago Bears offense into this week four matchup against Darius Leonard and the Colts defense. I'm really disappointed we couldn't get one more, more one more week out of Mitch. You know, I just I was hoping we could catch Mitch and maybe be the last team he plays against, but unfortunately for us, uh they're they're smart and they're not gonna give Mitch another chance. So, you know, it's Nick Foles. And there's good and bad to this. I mean, you look at it, we dominated them last year. We pressured them last year. But this offensive line is much better than the one Jacksonville had last year. And this offense is much better. It's much more of a get-the-ball-out-quick offense. And Nick Foles is going to be good in this offense. Just hopefully not good against us this week. 
couple of good things we have going for us. Eberflus played against Foles in, in Dallas, and he knows him well. And obviously, Frank Wright coached Nick Foles, so he knows his strength, strengths and weaknesses better than anyone else. But this is definitely going to be a better version of the Bears with Nick Foles at quarterback than we would have seen with Mitch Trubisky. And as far as their offense goes, it's not a super you know, electric offense with major playmakers, but they do have some solid players. Running back David Montgomery, 43 carries, 191 yards, and six receptions, 64 yards, and a touchdown. So he's going to be the guy that carries the ball most of the time. Then you got, obviously, tight end Jimmy Graham, who's been in the league forever, still making plays, 10 receptions, 103 yards, three touchdowns. He leads the team in touchdowns. And then their biggest playmaker, a guy we struggle with in Jacksonville, and he's a big-time player, wide receiver, Allen Robinson, 18 receptions, 230 yards, and a touchdown. So Allen Robinson, to me, is the biggest playmaker on their offense, and the guy that we're going to have to pay attention to. And another guy that they bring in and have run the ball with is Cordero Patterson, who they kind of use as a jack-of-all-trades. He returns kickoffs. He plays running back. He plays wide receiver. And he's he's probably the fastest guy on their team. So that that's another guy we're going to have to watch out for, special teams-wise and on defense. So they've got some playmakers. They have a, they had a big loss in, in Tariq Cohen, the smallest back they have, but he was a very, very good player, very fast, very quick, and a big problem for defenses to stop. Unfortunately, he got hurt, and he's out for the year. So the Colts won't have to see him, but they definitely have a couple of playmakers in Allen Robinson and Cordero Patterson. And taking a look at our keys to the game for the Colts defense, matching up with the Chicago Bears offense. Key number one, do not allow Nick Foles to get into a rhythm. This was a key we had week one against Gardner Minshew. We failed miserably at it. We let Gardner get into a rhythm, and he went 19 for 20. We cannot let Nick Foles get into a rhythm in this game. And when you go back to last year and we beat him, one of the reasons why we were able to keep him out of his rhythm was we ran the ball for over 200 yards in that game. That was the game Mack had 100, got hurt, and Jonathan Williams came in and ran for 100. So when you're sitting on the bench and the other team's running for over 200 yards, it's going to be tough to get into a rhythm despite what they do defensively. And we have not been running the ball like that this year. And now you're going up against the Chicago defense, which is going to be much more difficult to run the ball against. So key number one defensively for the Colts, do not let Nick Foles get into a rhythm. Yeah, and I think this starts with playing really hard press coverage at the line of scrimmage. We didn't do that in Jacksonville, and we need to do that here as far as just not allowing you know free releases off the line of scrimmage. This defense is much better when we're in receiver's faces. I think we'll get Rock back this week, which should help with that because he's a very physical corner. Rhodes has been playing well. Carey's been playing well. So I think that'll help. Then you, then you get into the pass rush and all that stuff and controlling the running game. I think all those things will play a role, you know, in that in stopping that key and making that key, you know, something that we can control being Foles not getting in a rhythm. We can't allow them to run. We can't allow him to have, you know, uncontested throws. We've got to contest everything and make it difficult for him. I definitely think we're going to see an improvement. We have to see an improvement from week one in that area. But I definitely think it's something that we're capable of doing. And we've done it before with Foles, although this is a different offensive system. I do think we're going to see the Colts play much better defense this week as opposed to the last road trip we had. So key number one is definitely don't let him get in a rhythm because if you do, he will pick you apart. Key number two, and you kind of touched on it, and key number one, win the line of scrimmage. Yeah, this is, this is a game that's going to be extremely physical on both sides of the ball. Bears defensive line versus our offensive line, and then our defensive line Bears versus their offensive line. It's going to be a trench game, and we're going to have to control the line of scrimmage, control the run, get them in passing, long passing downs. That plays into our hands. We can get turnovers that way. So, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where things kind of line up. If you, if you start winning at the line of scrimmage, that forces them to go outside of their game plan. Like, if, they, if we can control the run, they can't run the ball, and we, can, we hold them under four yards a carry or three yards a carry or whatever – when we get them in third and seven and third and longs, that's going to help our defense because we're or then we can pin our, our ears back. They're going to have to run longer patterns. We'll have more time to get to the quarterback. And I had all, of, all of what I'm saying starts with winning at the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. And I think it's a huge key for this defense to be physical at the line of scrimmage and win at the line of scrimmage. And that will allow us to do everything else we want to do on defense. 
And key number three, get consistent pressure for four quarters. It plays in the keys one and two. You don't want him to get into a rhythm. If you put pressure on him, it'll be more difficult for him to get into a rhythm. And key number two, win the line of scrimmage. You win the line of scrimmage, you put pressure on the quarterback, you get into the backfield. Key number three, consistent pressure for four quarters. Yeah, I think this is the biggest key of the game. We saw what happens when we pre- when you pressure Nick Foles last year. We we wore him out, and he had a horrible game against us. To me, this this is the key to the game. If the Colts can get con- consistent pressure on him for four quarters and not just a sack here and a sack there and actually pressure him for four quarters, the Colts will win this game. I have no doubt. That is the key to this game to me is putting pressure on him you know, making him move around and and make throws he's not comfortable making, just making him uncomfortable in the pocket. So our our front four is going to have to be really, really good in this game. Buckner's going to have to have a big game. Houston's going to have to have a big game. I think, you know, Flus will dial up some stuff. I think he was very vanilla intentionally against the Jets, and I think he's going to dial up some pressure for this game, some different looks. So I think the Colts absolutely have to pressure him for four quarters, and if they do that, they'll win this game. Yep, and before we flip over to the Bears' defense, I would like to see the Colts' defense get a takeaway in this game via a forced fumble. I don't know if it's per se a key to the game. I think as long as you win the turnover battle, it doesn't really matter how you get them, if you're picking off passes or whatever it may be. But I would like to see this team who talked about it. Anthony Walker said coming into the season that their goal was, I think, 60 takeaways. It's going to be tough to pick off 60 passes. So you're going to have to create takeaways in other ways. I love the five picks the last two weeks. I love the two safeties, even though they don't technically count as turnovers. But I would like to see this defense with the Forrest Buckner and Justin Houston and Kenny Moore and Darius Leonard force a fumble recover a fumble, and create a takeaway that way because through three weeks we haven't created a turnover via a forced fumble. I would like to see the Colts recover at least one fumble this week, but really all that matters is winning the turnover battle. But it would be nice to create turnovers in other ways than just interceptions. I think with this defense, and what, and we know this about Darius, when they, when, when they finally break through, they break through. They'll get two, three fumbles you know, a pick. So I think that breakthrough as far as fumble recovering fumbles is coming. I'm not ready to say it's going to happen this week because we all know if I say it's going to happen this week, it will absolutely not happen this week. But I will say <laughs> I think the Colts are definitely going to play great defense this week, and I think, you know, there's going to be opportunities for turnovers in this game. The key is making those, those chances count and getting those turnovers. So uh, that is a great point, Luke. That's a great, I mean, that's an extra key to the game, but that is a good, that is a very good point. Thank you, Jason. And on a positive note, offensively, we haven't lost a fumble. So we have yet to see through three games, the Colts haven't forced a turnover, recovering a fumble, and the Colts haven't lost a fumble to date. So hopefully one of those two changes this week, and it happens defensively where we put the ball back in our offense's hands. And let's take a look now at the Colts offense and our matchup with this Chicago Bears loaded defense coached by Charles Pagano. And Pagano never had the level of talent he currently has right now with the Bears in Indianapolis defensively with the Colts. You had a great year out of Robert Mathis in 2013. I thought he could have won Defensive Player of the Year that year. And then in 2014, you had Vontae Davis play at an all-pro caliber level. He got snubbed. I thought both of them got snubbed. I thought Mathis got snubbed in 2013 of the Defensive Player of the Year award. And then the next year, I thought Vontae Davis got snubbed of being an All-Pro. But outside of those two guys, you never really had, like, blue-chip talent defensively for the Colts. And it was one and done. Like, Mathis was coming towards the end of his career. The injury started to build up after that season. And then Vontae Davis was kind of a flash in the pan for his greatness in Indianapolis. And outside of that, we didn't have, like, we had really nothing else at corner outside of Davis nothing at safety, nothing in the linebacking core. We went through the entire Pagano era. Who was our best linebacker at the time, Jarrell Freeman or Dequell Jackson? So you look at this Bears team, despite as bad of a coach as I thought Pagano was in Indianapolis, now he has all these toys to play with on this defense in Chicago where you could probably just run these guys out there and they'll make plays, guys like Roquan Smith and Eddie Jackson and Akeem Hicks. But it all starts with the outside linebacker, Khalil Mack, one of the top premier blue chip talents 
in the National Football League. He's up there with guys like Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey, the best of the best at their position. Stephen Gilmore, when you look at Mac, you have to know where he is at all times because he could wreck a game. And he's not alone on this defense. They have multiple players who could wreck a game. But it starts and stops with the all-pro Khalil Mack. Yeah, Chuck never had anything close to this amount of, of talent on his defenses in Indianapolis. And part of that was, you know, because he had a baboon for a general manager. But part of it was also because he can't, he just didn't develop players. So, but he's got a embarrassment of riches on this defense. You've got Khalil Mack, 12 tackles, one tackle for loss, one and a half sacks, three quarterback hits. And I expect those numbers to go up. The guy that's been just absolutely destroying everyone he's playing against and a guy that we're going to have to stop or he will absolutely wreck the game for us is Akeem Hicks. In three games, he's got 12 tackles, four tackles for loss, three and a half sacks, and seven quarterback hits. So that is somebody that you're going to have to take care of. That's I think Quentin Nelson and Brian Kelly are definitely going to have to slow him down for us to, to do be able to do what we want to do on offense. Then you look at the inside linebacker spot with Roquan Smith coming into his own 20 tackles, two tackles for loss, one forced fumble. And then you just get into some of the other players. Eddie Jackson, who was rookie year, had an insane year at strong safety. Then you look at Tayshawn Gibson at free safety, Kyle Fuller, Jalen Johnson, Danny Trevathan at inside linebacker. I mean, they've got guys all over the field that can play. Deion Bush is another guy. So they're loaded. I mean, they have players everywhere at all, all three levels. And so the Colts are really going to have to make sure they take care of the ball this week and do, you know, do what they're supposed to do. They can't have any stupid turnovers because this is not a team where, we, where you can fall behind and come back against them. Their defense is just too good. They're ninth in the league, I think, in points per game, so they don't give up a ton of points. And so the Colts are really going to have to come to play offensively this week. They're going to have to make things happen because – you know, this defense is tough and, and the scoring is going to be hard. And it's just one of those weeks where I expect a close game. And I think the difference in the game, like usual, is going to be turnover. So we'll see what happens. Now let's jump into the keys to the game, Jason. Key number one, stay balanced. Yeah, absolutely. You cannot you cannot be one-dimensional against a, a, a good defense like this one. You can't do it. They'll, they will beat your brains in if you're one-dimensional. We, we have to continue to run the ball, even if we're not running it with that much success, because if you get one-dimensional when you got Mac and you got Hicks and, and all these guys, they're going to tear – I mean, they're just going to – they're going to pin their ears back and we'll have a statue back there, and Rivers will take a beating. Because this defense, as good as our offensive line is, they will find a way to get to our cornerback. So key number one is stay balanced. No matter what, stay balanced. It's okay to punt in this game. This is not an incredibly talented offense we're going against. So allow our defense to play defense. And if you're not, you know, if if it's third or fourth and two, you don't have to go for it. You can punt it because, you know, we can't have any situations where we go for it and don't get it against this team. They're too, they're too good defensively. I would rather punt, pen them, and play defense. So, number one, stay balanced, run the ball, throw the ball, mix it up, and, and focus on just maintaining possession of the ball. That's, that, that is the most important thing in this game, is not turning the ball over. Key number two, Keep Rivers clean. Did a phenomenal job last week, and really all season. I think Rivers has 95 dropbacks, only been sacked twice, really hasn't been hit, and is the least pressured quarterback in the National Football League. So we've done a great job up until this point, but we haven't seen a defense like this Bears defense. Key number two, keep Rivers clean. Another key to the game, man. It's of immense importance because we everyone knows Rivers can't move. So how do you keep a defense on their heels You've got to be able to establish the run. This is a game I want to see Jordan Wilkins in early. I want to see both of our running backs run the ball, mix Hines in there, because I want to take – this is a game we have to take the pressure off of Phillip Rivers. Because I'll tell you right now, if we throw the ball twice as much as we run the ball, he will throw interceptions and we will not win this game because that's what the Bears' defense is designed to do. Take away the run make you beat them throwing the ball, allow Khalil Mack, Hicks, all those guys to get after your quarterback, and that's a situation that no one wants to be in against this defense. 
So the Colts absolutely have to run the ball to keep Rivers clean. That's the key. They've got to be able to run it and stay out of long distance, you know, you know, third and, and 11 or penalties when we're third and 15. You just can't put yourself in those positions against this defense. This is by far the best defense we're playing, maybe in the first half of the season, to be quite honest with you, until we get to the Ravens. So the Colts really, really have to do a good job focusing on being patient with the run because that will allow your passing game to – they won't be able to pin their ears back. They won't know when you're throwing. You keep them off balance. That, in turn, will make them easier to block, and which in turn will keep Rivers clean, allow him to make some quick throws, get in a rhythm. So key number two, keep Rivers clean. Very important. And key number three, touchdowns in the red zone. And, Jason, I might even expand this to points because we do not want to see – Red zone turnovers. I don't want to see a fourth and two where Wright gets cute. This is one of those games, I think, back to 2018, that six-zip loss to the Jaguars, and we had Andrew Luck in that game, and we had multiple opportunities to kick field goals, and we left the red zone without points. I think points are going to be at a premium, and I would not leave points on the field. But, of course, if you get seven, you want seven. Touchdowns in the red zone, and I would also just say points in the red zone. No turnovers down in the red zone you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna change this and luke what you said is absolutely correct against this defense points in the red zone because we've seen too many times where reich has got cute or done things that he shouldn't have done got out of character and not gotten points the jacksonville game in 2018 is a great example we if we get in the we if we get in the red zone five times we should come out with a minimum of 15 points that's worst case scenario best case scenario would be 35 points somewhere between 15 and 35 points so the Colts they've got to just make the best of their red zone opportunities now if we have if we had our choice we'd want all those to be touchdowns but you're not playing against a peewee league team so some of those cases you're not going to be able to get touchdowns the key is in those cases that you can't score touchdowns to make your field goals Blankenship cannot miss any easy field goals this week we we are going to need every point possible you know with the injuries that we have on offense we have to have everyone on point and and that includes our kicker we need every point that every point we can possibly get it's going to matter in this game as much as any game because i think this is going to be an extremely close game yep and let's get into the predictions jason i'll let you go first as everybody keeps their fingers crossed as you make your selection well, I will say this. I do think this is a very big test for the Colts. I think it's it's going to be a very interesting game. I'll be interested to see how the Colts handle the pressure because I know Pagano is going to blitz Rivers, which I don't think will bother Rivers too much, but how they handle the pressure. He's going to get pressured in this game, and the key is not turning the ball over. I think whoever turns the ball over in this game more will, will lose the game. I mean, I think it's that simple. Uh, for me, I just I think the Bears win this game by a field goal. Uh, I think the Colts are going to be in the game the entire time, but I just I have a feeling that the Bears will come up with a field goal late to win this one. And also, if I pick the Colts, we all know they'll lose. So it's going to be to me, regardless of, of a prediction or anything else, I think it's going to be a really good game, a fun game to watch, and I think it's going to be a close game. But in the, in the end, I think the Bears win by a field goal. I agree with everything you said. I think it's going to be a good game. I think it's going to be a close game. I just have a rule. I can't bet on Chuck Pagano. I have to fade him no matter what. If we went into this game at 25%, I just can't find it in myself to pick Pagano to win a game. So, although he's not the head coach, if he was the head coach, forget about it. I would take the Colts laying 25 on the road. But I'm going to pick the Colts. By three, I'll say the opposite. We get a late field goal. Blake and Chips first. Welcome to the NFL moment. And we win this game by three. I think there's going to be a lot of field goals in this game, which does make me nervous about the rookie on the road. I'm going to go somewhere like... I think it's going to be a low-scoring game, too. Not like crazy low, like 13-10, but I'm going to go... 2017 or something like that yeah just just a low scoring game points are at a premium i don't know what the over under is but if it was around 45 i would go under i think it's gonna be a low scoring game and you think back to last week where the colts go over 30 
we have two defensive touchdowns, and we also have a safety. So that's not going to happen again. And now you're going up against a much better defense than that Jets defense. So I just think points are going to be at a premium. I think we'll win something like maybe maybe 17-13 or something like that. I think it'll be a close game. I think the Colts win maybe a late late field goal, maybe a three-point margin of victory, maybe a two-point, one-point margin of victory. But I think it'll be a close, low-scoring game. I think it's going to be a really good game. I think it's going to be a game that will be better than your average 1 o'clock game. I mean, I think this has nighttime potential to me. Like, I think this is more of a primetime matchup that'll be played at 1 o'clock. So I think it'll be fun. I think it'll be interesting. You have a lot of a lot of big names in this matchup, especially on the defensive sides of the ball for both teams. So I think it'll be fun. I just can't find it in myself, Jason, to pick Pagano. I just, I just can't do it, Jason. I can't do it. <laughs> well, listen, if, if, if it's anything like his years here, we'll go out and we'll score 51 points. Hopefully. That would be beautiful. That would be wonderful. Because it would be poetic. I feel like that would be poetic justice. It really, it really would. It really would. And Luke, I want to. I want to say one last thing before we before we head out. I really believe this is a, a, a super important game for our team. I feel like if we can win this game and fl- kind of flip our season instead of going from you know two and one to two and two, going yeah. from two and one to three and one, I think it's a huge like turning point in our season. Mm-hmm. It's because gigantic. Yeah, it's a gigantic game. I think I think if the Colts can win this game, and it's only a two point spread, so it's you know it's not it's not one of those games where you're it's an insurmountable opponent. It, it's somebody the Colts match up fairly well with. So if they can somehow win this game, going into Cleveland, I would feel really really good about about where we're at, where we're sitting divisional wise, and with the future uh, and and everything that that's going on. And one other thing. We didn't mention this, but I think we're getting Trey Burton back this week. And if he plays, I think he's going to have a big impact on this game. Revenge game, too, going up against his former team from the past two seasons with Chicago. So, Well, Luke, if, I'll say this. If Trey Burton plays, I'm calling my shot. He's going to score a touchdown in this game. Nice. Everybody mark it down. I mean, that means there's Trey no Burton. chance he scores a touchdown in this game. Okay, we'll see. Now you're good. We'll see. You're good I at stuff been, like. Been, I, wait, wait, Luke, Luke. I've been right before. Who who called Ebron's Pro Bowl season, my brother? That was you. Who called that? You're good with tight ends. See? Also, also, you yeah. called Moali Cox. You called him as your breakout player last year. Nobody could have predicted the luck retirement, and now he's breaking out. He's definitely a Pro Bowler right now, in my opinion. Oh yeah, he's playing. Dude, Moali is balling out. He's 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 our best tight end right now. And he would have broke so, out last he, year. Had luck not retired, the luck retirement stunted that his is. growth because he had a better year in 2018 than he did in 2019, minus that drop against the Jaguars, which turned into a Miles Jack pick. But he had a better year in 2018, and he was much more raw in 2018. The difference was he had a quarterback throwing to him, and now you have a quarterback in Rivers who knows your type of tight end so well from his years in San Diego with Antonio Gates and Moali and this is not to say Moali is better than Antonio Gates or he's gonna be a Hall of Famer blah 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 you look at Moali's build and his hands and his height and his size he's a bigger target the upside the sky as Chuck oh my god it's so perfect Jason as we play the Bears as we the sky shall listen the sky shall look look hey J- Jason the, the what's your name? You know the basketball player that that Ryan that Ryan got for me. What was his name? Eric Schwope. Eric Schwope. Eric Schwope, like Eric Schwoosh. It reminded me of a basketball player because he was a basketball, but because it was the Super Bowl. It was a great Super Bowl in August. <laughs> but listen, Eric Schwope. Eric Schwope was listen. This guy, we had a lot of talent in front of him. Dwayne Allen, Kobe Fleener. It was tough to get on the field for him. But this guy was one hell of a basketball player, one hell of a football player. I mean, hey, listen. He's a grown man. Grown grown man, football player, basketball player, okay. husband, brother, son. I mean, just the full package. <laughs> but honestly, <laughs> everything that we were told, swope, scope, whatever, would be, Mo Alley is and more. He is evolving now into a pro bowl all pro caliber tight end and the crazy thing is he was a better blocker first 
You think basketball player come in, high point balls, jump balls in the red zone, goal line formation. You just lob it up to him back of the end zone. You would think that would be the bread and butter. He would come into the league like that play he made against Oakland in 2018, that one-hand snag, an incredible play. You would think that would be his game, like going up and grabbing a rebound or, or slamming an alley-oop, going up and just high-pointing a ball, just being an athlete. But he came in, and he was good at the little things. He was good at blocking. He was good at you know the things you would think would come second or might never come at all. I mean, you have guys like Eric Ebron, never came. First-round pick, never came. Never became an all-around tight end. Yeah, and also, just to, just to kind of mention this, I fully expect at some point Jack Doyle is going to make, make his presence felt. And this would be a great week. If all three of those tight ends play, I expect our tight ends to have a big day. Did you like that little rhyme I did? It was like I was, it, it was, like I was channeling Chuck. Wait, doing, say it again? Doing right, I missed it. I said, uh, if all of our tight ends play, there's probably a good chance one of them has a big day. I got you, babe. I got you, babe. <laughs> so, Look, you've never seen the movie? It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. <laughs> oh, Charles, I don't miss you. <laughs> oh. oh, no. No, I definitely, definitely don't miss him. The last time we saw Pagano, it's just bad S-H-I-T happens when we see Pagano. The last time we saw Pagano, Andrew Luck retired at halftime. Completely unexpected. He didn't even expect it. He was expecting to retire tomorrow, the day after that. It's like, that's, that's why. Maybe I will pick. Maybe I'm not betting on Chuck. I'm not taking the Bears, per se. I might take the Bears now as my pick. Because Chuck just might be one of those guys where good things can't happen to us when he's around. Yeah, bad luck charm. Just bad luck Chuck. Bad luck Chuck, literally meaning, you know, he ruined luck and bad luck Oh Chuck, my God. You know? kind of it's a double, double meaning. meaning. It's a double meaning. Bad luck Chuck. Killed Andrew Luck. Every time I watched a game, I screamed, what the fuck? The rhymes are on point today, Jason. But we got to wrap this up. Game on Sunday. That's my man, Jason Spears. I'm your host, Luke Diamond. Big game. And like you said, Jason, the difference between 3-1 and one and 2-2 two and two is huge. This is a big game for the Colts, and it's a validation game. Validate the two wins against teams that are a combined 0-7. Yes, we beat up on the Vikings. Yes, we beat up on the Jets. But let's go out on the road, play a good road game, against the talented Bears defense. Let's put up some points. Let's move the ball. And let's win this game in the reunion against Charles Pagano. We'll be back Sunday night to wrap it up right here on the For the Culture Podcast.